I got some questions in my last video asking about my menu bar. You'll notice that despite me being on Mac OS, it looks quite a bit different from the default one. I have a graph of my CPU utilization. I can see my remaining disk space, my battery level, my volume, and in this case, this widget will actually respond as I lower the volume on my system. It goes away when the computer is muted. Um, and then I have a couple more just for the weather, the date and time, and then the left side shows me my currently running application. And I can even, um, if I lower my volume, I can play a song and I can see which song is playing on this left side. And so this is going to pull from my terminal music player, but it can also pull from Spotify. And this is all achieved using something called Sketchy Bar. So I'm going to show you how I've set this up today. Um, it's quite simple to set up, so I will let you guys follow the tutorials, which will be linked in the description. So you get a simple setup, and once you have that, then we can follow along, and I can show you how I implemented each of these menu bar items. So assuming you follow the setup guide, you'll have a configuration file that looks a lot like this. You'll have this sketchy bar command, which is going to set the general appearance of the bar, and you do this just by specifying a bunch of key value pairs. And if you're curious, the exhaustive list can be found on their website in this table. Uh, so there's a lot to play with here, but I've kept it quite simple. Now, we also have this default section, um, which is going to apply to any item that you add to the bar. So in my case, I've set some padding, uh, the fonts. I can do that separately for the icon pack and for the text itself. And then you can set things like the color, uh, padding again, uh, the background color can be separate from the background color of the bar. So if you want it to sort of pop out from the bar, that's what I have. Um, and you can do all of that here. And this is just a bit of a convenience so that you don't have to specify this each time you add an item. Of course, you can override these, but let's go ahead and hop into the first item on my bar, which is this Apple logo. So to add an item to your menu bar, what you're going to do is use the sketchy bar command and pass it this add flag. Now we're going to tell it we want to add an item and then you give it a name. So I've named this one Apple just because it's going to be the Apple logo that's at the top left of my menu bar. Then you specify the position, um, which is, you know, which side of the menu bar do you want to place this on. And finally, you have this, you know, slightly more complicated set flag. And so we're going to specify we want to set some attributes for the Apple item. because Remember, that's the name I gave it. And in this case, we're going to set the icon equal to this Apple logo. And then we have label.drawing is equal to off. Now, the reason we have this is because this item only consists of the icon. There's no text beside it. So we can simply turn off the text or the label. And then finally, we also have some padding that we're going to apply just for styling purposes. And this is actually all you need to get that Apple logo. What comes after this is the next item that I have here on my menu bar. And so this is going to display whichever application you have open. And so this uses uh, the pretty robust event system that Sketchy Bar has. So first of all, we're going to use this add flag again to again add an item, in this case called front app, and we're adding this to the left. And then we're going to set some values for the front app item. In this case, the icon is going to be turned off. So notice that we just have a label, just some text, no icon. Um, so that's what this is going to accomplish. And then we have this script attribute here. And so the cool thing about Sketchy Bar is if you have some more complicated logic, you can actually separate this out into its own script. And so in this case, the front app.sh script is going to be called anytime this event occurs, front app switched. And so if we take a look at Sketchy Bar's documentation again, and we look at the events and scripting page, you're going to see a bunch of events that you can look at. And so media change will be helpful later on. Um, but right now, at the top of this table is front app switched. And so this is just going to tell us when the application changes. And so each time that occurs, we're going to call this script, which is going to run this if statement and very simple logic just to set the label um, equal to something that Sketchy Bar gives us. Um, I won't go in depth into how this works, but Sketchy Bar is giving us a couple variables here that we can make use of. Um, so that is this first section here that's coming up with these 
first two items. And this next section here, I won't go over this because this is actually just going to be um, something specific to a very niche audience who uses my um, particular window management tool called Aerospace. Um, so that's the tool that I'm using to be able to switch windows quickly. Um, but it's going to show me which workspace I'm in at the moment. So kind of cool, but I'll skip that one. And now we can talk about this one here. So again, we're going to add an item. In this case, we're calling it music and we're adding it to the left of the screen. Now this, if you recall, is just going to be, if I play a song, I want to be able to see that on the top left. And so I've given it an icon of just the Spotify logo, even though I'm not using Spotify. And then some styling here. I have some nice colors that match my color scheme. I also have this click script. So if I click on this, it's actually going to execute that open command. So if I do that, there we go, there's Spotify. Now, I'm also going to have it update itself each two seconds. And so this is just going to check to see, have I paused my music, has the song changed, etc. And so this is actually, you know, not all that necessary for a reason that I'll explain in a second. But if I go up to the script tag here, we have that um, we're going to be using this music.sh bash script. And so this will be linked in my GitHub repository. And again, this is pretty dense, so I'm not going to go over it. Um, but this is checking both Spotify and RMPC, which is my terminal music player. So it's going to see if either one is playing. And if it is, then it sets the value for the label um, of, the, um, of the item. So um, now getting back to this, I have this subscribe, the music item, to the media change event. And so this is another one of those. You can see media change is one of the events we're given. And so this is going to work actually for Spotify, but because I'm using RMPC, it's not going to work. And so this is why I have this update frequency is equal to two. Again, you might not need this if you're just using Spotify. Um, but this is all of the items that we have on the left. So now let's go ahead and talk about the ones that we have on the right side. So the first one on this side is a pretty simple one for a clock. And this is going to update every 10 seconds. It has a calendar icon, which you can see up at the top right of my screen. And it's going to be updated using the clock.sh script. So if we go ahead and take a look at this, all this is doing is a sketchy bar command where we're setting the label equal to the result of this date command. So this is a very simple one. I don't believe I even came up with this one. It might just be what you get from following the, the setup guide. But moving on, we have this weather item, which is a little bit more complicated. So this one is going to be run every five minutes and it's going to fetch the current weather at your location. And so if we look at the weather.sh script, you can see it looks like quite a lot, but really all this comes down to is this curl command. And so I'll show you what this looks like. If I go ahead and run the same command in my terminal, you can see we just get a JSON object that's going to show us um, in the current object, we have the precipitation, for example, we have the temperature and then a weather code. And that's all we need actually. So what we're doing now is just extracting that data. And then we're seeing what was the weather code. Is it sunny, windy, whatnot? And then we're going to assign it a nice looking icon based on that weather code. And then we just construct a label that's going to show us the icon and then the temperature. And optionally, if it's raining, then it's going to show us how much it's going to rain in the next two hours, which is kind of nice. Otherwise, it just leaves it with the weather condition and the temperature. So you can see you can have some pretty complicated logic embedded in these scripts which is what makes Sketchy Bar so nice and personalizable. Uh, in this case, I'm also setting the color to blue if there's going to be some precipitation. So that's a pretty nice one. Um, I also have this click script set to open the weather app um, on Mac OS. So if you click on the item, it just opens the weather app in case you want more details. The next one is the volume item. 
And so this one is going to be subscribed to the volume change event. And so this is another one of those events that SketchyVar gives you, but anytime it detects that the volume has been changed, it's going to execute this script. And so this one is pretty simple, but all it's going to do is collect that volume level from SketchyVar, and then it's going to decide which icon it should have. So if you look at this item, uh, you can see as I increase the volume and decrease it, if I go yeah, a little lower, you can see the icon changes a little bit. If I go lower further, it changes again. And so that's all this logic is doing. And then finally, we are going to say that if the volume is not equal to zero, then we want to show the widget. Otherwise, if it is zero, then we just want to set the drawing of this widget completely off altogether. And so that's how you get this behavior where it disappears as soon as you mute the MacBook. Uh, so that one's pretty cool. Now, the next one is for the battery. And this one I won't be able to demonstrate completely for you just because there's not a, a super convenient way. But you can see this one's going to update every two minutes using this battery.sh script. And it's also going to subscribe the battery widget to a couple events. So anytime you wake up the system or if you plug in or unplug your MacBook, it's going to trigger these events. And so this one is kind of similar to the weather one um, where it's going to collect some data and then it's going to decide on an icon based on the data that it got. And so in this case, we're just running these commands, which I can show you what these are. It's just gonna tell you the percentage of your charge. And then the other one, um, let's see, is AC power. This is just going to check um, if you're plugged in or not. And so we can just check for whether the AC power exists in the output. And that tells us everything we need to know to construct a nice output. We can also conditionally set the color of the battery icon. So if you are less than 20%, it will be orange, and if you're less than 10%, it's going to be red, just to kind of subtly grab your attention. And finally, we go ahead and set all those values based on what we found by running all these commands. Now, the second to last one here is the disk space. So you can see it's this one up here. It's just gonna tell you how much space you have remaining on your system. And like all the others, we have a script for this and it's a very, very simple command. If I go ahead and run this, it's just going to ask your system how much space is available, and it's gotta do a little bit of searching to find the answer. Um, but ultimately, it's just going to set the label based on what we found here. So a very simple one. It's, it doesn't take long to set these up. And finally, this is another capability that I want to show off. You can make a graph for anything that you want using SketchyBar. And so I have an item, or I should say a graph actually, called CPU usage. And we're going to set it equal to um, the results of this script. So basically every five seconds, we're going to run the CPU usage script. And this is going to run a couple of commands to see the CPU usage. And then ultimately we're going to end up setting the label equal to whatever the percent utilization is. And then the graph aspect of this is this last line. We're going to get the current utilization. We normalize it so it's a number between zero and one. And then you can use the push flag to add that value to the history of CPU utilization values. So it can construct a graph of CPU usage over time. Um, and so this is super easy to set up, as you can see, uh, only a couple of lines. So anything that you want to monitor over time, you can make a nice looking graph for. And so this one, we have a couple of visual properties that we're setting, but ultimately you can see it doesn't differ too much from the others um, in terms of the workflow of adding it. So those are all of the items um, that I've added. And I'm curious to see if you guys are using SketchyVar, what you've added. Um, if you're not using SketchyVar yet, hopefully this video has convinced you that you can do some pretty cool things. Uh, and so if you do end up getting into it, let me know what you come up with. 
Uh, that's all I have for now, but I'll be coming out with a new video pretty soon, so stay tuned.